We had Joe Thomas on the show. Terrell Davis is going to join us, and we will have a uh, a uh, a serious, real deal adult conversation about NFL ownership and what's going on with Jerry Jones and the the rest of his compadres and what's going on with the NFL in general. Uh, ratings wise, when Don Van Natta joins us in hour number three, he is the uh, one of the ESPN senior investigative columnists and writers uh, who has written uh, quite a bit on this subject. He's going to stop by in studio in hour number three. But we had Joe Thomas on talking about uh, what he tweeted about earlier uh, this week, uh, how he wants to be the owner of next owner of the Carolina Panthers. And he wants to rename them the Cal- what the Carolina Mission B- Barbecue uh, Mission Barbecues, and yeah. how they're going to yeah. go for it on fourth down every single time. Thus, yeah. no need for punters and kickers. And when Joe called in last hour, of course, I was going to ask him specifically about that. And here was the uh, the answer. I think when you waste roster spots on kickers Ooh. and punters, wow. those are roster spots that could be taken by more left tackles. So <laughs> I don't see why you'd want to waste it on kickers and punters. <laughs> But I got to tell you, Joe, I mean, uh, certainly in these parts, as you know, I'm a punters are people too movement guy. I, I have an issue here. I mean, punters are weapons, Joe. I'm not sure I totally agree with you, but uh, <laughs> they are certainly people, but I'm not sure they're football players. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fighting words. People started tweeting about it and uh, tweeted at Pat McAfee, Pat, at Pat McAfee show. And the man who was in that foxhole with me uh, for the brand, Pat McAfee, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Did you hear that, Pat? Rich, how's it going, buddy? Well, I've got to tell you, I'm a, I'm a little perturbed uh, yep. by what Joe Thomas had to say. I'm wondering what you think. Well, just like you were talking about Christmas movies, anytime somebody slanders the brand, it's much like when little Charlie in the Santa Claus shakes the snow globe and Santa comes running. That's kind of what I feel like guys like you and me do whenever punters or kickers are bashed. And I thank you for that from the brand and from the bottom of my heart, Rich. Well, I appreciate that, Pat. You know you know uh, what I feel about this and, um, and how punters are weapons. They, they, are, they are crucial members of a football team. Uh, and to hear them maligned uh, in, in a bid for ownership uh, in the national football, I just won't stand for it, Pat. I won't stand for uh, it. And I, there's, there needs to be 50 million Rich Eisens out there. Because <laughs> let me tell you, just like in Dateline, you got to look for a motive, right? So let's look for this motive from Joe Thomas to do a terroristic type thought in eliminating good American men who punt and kick balls for a living. He's trying to eliminate Americans. So let's remember that the motive here Mm -hmm. is that you're talking about one of the greatest left tackles in the history of the game, who has been held hostage by one of the greatest failures in football history, which is the Cleveland Browns. He is a jaded soul. Everything he says has to become with a grain of salt, knowing that his his view right now on the whole, maybe world, is a little bit negative for the situation he's been in. So you can't hold it against him. You just got to hope that guys like him get out there, maybe own a team, and they realize that whenever left tackles and left guards and centers and quarterbacks and wide receivers and all these very tough, I'm being serious when I say that, very tough guys can't get the job done, they roll out a punter to be the janitor to clean things up. And that's just the way that Joe Thomas needs to look at it. We're not as tough as you, Joe. We're not as athletic as you. Now, granted, I've had a lot more success in, like, celebrating wins in the NFL than you have had. But we are the guys who got your back. And we are going to go to war for you. And that's what the brand's all about, is just looking out for their teammates when they can and being the janitor of the whole operation. Real blue-collar cleaning it all up, Rich. He's just lashing out, Pat, right? He's just lashing out. Yep. He doesn't know what he's yep. thinking. Because- he has no idea. He, he, think about that. Like, you know how Darren McFadden, it was on the internet, supposedly invested $3 million in Bitcoin like five years ago, <laughs> and then his financial advisor told him, nope, you didn't. You don't have $237 million right now like you're supposed to. You have zero millions. You don't even have the original $3 million. <laughs> He's jaded. Joe Thomas, he... His career was that whole situation right there, wasted in one of the greatest cities in Ohio. He's jaded. He doesn't mean it. He's just lashing out, looking for some form to feel better. It's just a negative situation that's been surrounding Joe Thomas. That's mm-hmm. how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I'm, again, just, Pat, when it all comes down to it, um, why, why do you think uh, people like carping on the 
punters as low-hanging fruit, Pat. I mean, I'd love to just get to the root issue here. Well, Rich, I have the answer for you, and you're not going to like it. Okay. A lot of the people, your friends, Mm -hmm. that cover football games have negative intelligence when it comes to special teams. Absolute zero knowledge about anything that's going on. And they're the, you are the voice of the game, Rich. You, uh, Joe Buck, I believe, is the voice of the game. Okay. Tarico, Collinsworth, these guys who I look up to and enjoy a lot as humans, know jack squat about special teams. So when they're covering fourth downs, they don't do it properly. Fourth downs are a party. They're a good time. And there's a lot going on. Just nobody has a clue about it, Rich. And I believe that's the real answer. So should I, next to my punters or people, two T-shirts that I've been hawking for quite some time, should I have a T-shirt that says, I know Jack Squat? Should I have that? Well, I see. I think you know a little bit more. Like I, I know. said earlier, I wish, I wish there was 50, but you don't call games, Rich. You're just, you're the guy in there that leads the most electric pregame show <laughs> on earth. But the, the actual game itself, whenever okay. fourth downs happen, yeah. it's almost like Joe Buck and Troy Aikman just go to the bathroom. They don't even act like it exists. Nothing's happening. Let's talk about a storyline somewhere else. It's a nightmare situation for the brand, but we're going to get it fixed, Rich Eisen. That's what the Internet's doing. So was there – was there? Uh, l- l- then let's hit this before I let you go, Pat, uh, to uh, your, your latest episode of the Pat McAfee Show on Barstool Sports. Um, did did the did the Pro Bowlers get it right? Brett Kern uh, in the AFC, and uh, uh, also uh, Johnny Hecker uh, in the NFC. So, did they get it right? So, so right now we are in a golden era of punters. A lot of people don't know that Ray Guy was a trailblazer, a game changer. But right now you have some <laughs> cannons launching footballs on. Sundays. I think Brett Kern's one of the most underrated punters in the history of the game, but Sam Cook had a year that's wild. Johnny Hecker's an absolute monster. An absolute monster. But if you were a quarterback, they make they take like sixteen quarterbacks to the Pro Bowl. For now, but for punters there's only one. And there's a lot of great guys. There's a lot of fan bases that are upset. Sam Cook had an incredible run this year. Justin Tucker was doing his thing. Adam Vinatieri had quite a year, and he's in diapers almost. It's just it's one of those things where there's only so many spots, and there's an abundance of greatness out there. Rich. In diapers, <laughs> you crack me up, man. Uh, ask, hey, ask Pat the poll question before we, we let him go here. Uh, on okay, the Rich okay Pat, show. who would you want <laughs> if you were still playing? Who would you want as your owner? Uh, the team of Diddy and Steph Curry, Joe Thomas. Bon Jovi or Oprah? Oh, man. Oprah, for sure. Yeah. Everybody gets rich if they know Oprah. You see Dr. Phil? That dude's got more money than anybody. So if I just meet Oprah, I think I might make a billion dollars real quick. I think you want to play for the O, for sure. Play for, <laughs> play for the O. I like it. <laughs> Plus, you never know. You go to the locker room under the seat, you get a car. You get one. Yeah. You never know. Under, oh, under the Christmas seat. would be amazing with <laughs> Oprah at the helm. You get a car. You get a Pro Bowl nod. You get a bonus. I like that a lot. Yeah, let's get Oprah in there for sure. <laughs> yeah, you're de- well, you definitely want Joe Thomas. He'd put you out of the job, man. He'd put you on the street. That's just not right. It's just not right. Terroristic, terroristic, terrorist <laughs> organization tied to that type of thinking by Mr. Joe Thomas. But I think after he and I have a few beers together, his, he, he will come around completely. Okay. Take care of yourself, Patrick. Always love uh, hearing from you. You take care. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Good you, show here, too. I like the design of the set, too. I'm watching it on the television. Dude, you guys look good. when are you coming out here? How many times do I have to invite you onto this set, Pat? How many times? Okay, January uh, 22nd through the 26th, Sirius XM. I'm a morning show in okay. L.A. from 7 to 10, Barstool Sports. Let's rock. So now, that, that 7 to 10 locally here in the Los Angeles area? Or is that yeah, Eastern? Yeah, no, Ooh. out there. Okay. I, I can't wake up that early. There's no way. They asked me if I wanted the Eastern morning slot. No way. I retired, bro. I don't want to set that alarm. But, yeah, okay. 7 to 10, morning show, West Coast. I'll be out there 22nd through the 26th. Let's so so make some magic. Okay, one of those days when you're done, we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll put you in a car and you'll hang out with us here. Okay, Pat? I just I just don't know if I'm, I'm big time enough to hang out with Rich Eisen. I mean, I, I just don't know if I am. Well, I mean, you 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 called me a voice of the game, but then uh, said that uh, I don't have that much of a voice to try and do what yeah. we need to do, which is get the yeah. punters credit. I mean, I've got I've got coasters, I've got T-shirts, I've got a voice, I've got a platform. Yeah. I I just don't know what else to say, Pat. Maybe just you and I that together, was, we'll just figure it out. We'll we'll brainstorm it. That was kind of a backhanded compliment out of me. It and was. I didn't want you to take it that way. <laughs> so I'm me.
That's on me. Merry Christmas to you and yours, Pat McAfee. Hey, thanks for having me on, Rich. Have a great one. I'll you see you it. soon. You got it. That's uh, at Pat McAfee Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.